Dartmoor, an unforgiving wild landscape set in the heart of the southwest of England. One could be forgiven for getting lost in the exquisite wilderness Dartmoor offers. However, underneath the bracken-covered moorland and steep river valleys, there is a darker story to be told, and it's one that does not rest easy with any that know it. Little survives here on Dartmoor, but the desert of grass and heather makes a perfect habitat for one much-loved species. Native to the moor and sharing its name is the Dartmoor pony. Full of character, intelligent and kind by nature, the pony captures the hearts of everyone. But they do not just inhabit the land here. Since the Bronze Age, they have been a part of the landscape. The pony is synonymous with Dartmoor. Ponies really um, eat very differently to the, to the cows and the sheep and they'll pick out different types of grasses and they also trample bracken and they act in a completely different way. So the, the three together is really important. The, the cows alone won't touch certain bits which create habitats which won't be there if, if the ponies aren't there. But it's not just the habitat the ponies help. They bring in much financial gain too. I was in a meeting today where there was a figure of £40,000 worth of revenue is brought in from the ponies. I think over the last sort of month or so, there's been hundreds of photos taken of the, of the ponies and especially the foals on the moor. And yeah, I think it's a really big part of tourism to the area. For generations, not only have the ponies actively managed the landscape, but they've also become a central part of Dartmoor's ancient culture and tradition. It's so hard to explain how important they are for, for the families. I interviewed 51 farmers for my bit of research and each one of them had their own amazing story about how they remembered the ponies being when they were little and how their grandparents bred the ponies and, you know, it's such a family tradition. The ponies mean a lot to, to me and my family. They've been in the family for generations and it's a way of life. My grandmother and her father used to keep Dartmoor ponies on the moor and they would breed up heavier, stronger ponies to use on the farm, pulling carts, ploughing and that sort of thing. And it was all bred up from true Dartmoor ponies. However, over the last few years, the market for the once popular pony has plummeted. Pony keeping was once a proud and profitable industry, but more recently, has lost its former worth. The ponies aren't commercially viable. People have decided I would be better to use my grazing rights with cattle and sheep because pony keeping is not bringing the returns that I need. Why is that? It's because the costs have come up. Where are the costs from? Passports, microchipping, huge changes in transport laws, recession. On top of that, the farmers didn't respond. Their market crashed. So what did they do? they kept breeding exactly the same number as before. They didn't respond to market demand, so their price crashed to nothing. Farmers rely on the sales of their ponies to make managing their herds worthwhile. But with the lack of demand and oversaturated market, farmers such as Steve have little or no option but to shoot their healthy foals each year. On top of the maintenance costs, of the, um, looking after the ponies, i.e. having to um, worm them and just the general upkeep of the ponies, having to then pay a cost of disposing the ponies that are unwanted. You wouldn't breed your cows and sheep to bring in in the autumn to take the lambs and the calves away just to shoot them. It's just mindless. Due to the drop in value, as many as 800 foals can be slaughtered in one year. But there are solutions. To help the pony keepers on Dartmoor and to prevent any more unnecessary slaughter, there are a few options that could be the answer to saving the breed. So what do you have to do? You have to control your breeding. Three options. Remove the stallions, and that's been suggested for the last 15 years. That's failed dismally. We've got immaculate conception foals all over the place because some reason or somehow you always get one. It's just impossible. That doesn't work. 
there's only 150 registered stallions on the moor rather than the 1,000 or 1,200 or so mares. So we do a stallion-directed control to the breeding management. That's going to be the simplest from the farming point of view and the best from the point of view of, of the behaviour of the ponies. If you're not going to remove the stallion, you can vasectomise it. It's not like gelding a, a pony. It's a process whereby the, the stallions keep all their normal natural behaviours and they keep uh, herding the mares, they cover the mares, but that they obviously don't impregnate them and they also keep other stallions away. A great idea in practice, but in reality, the mares keep cycling, so they keep needing sex in order to produce foals. <laughs> Um, and the stallion gets tarder and tarder and tarder because he can't produce the goods and they get bored in the end and go off and find some other husband anyway and then they come back to him. So that doesn't work. Or you go down the contraceptive route. For now, there is not sufficient research to back up how the contraceptive will work on the open commons. So we have several methods of doing it, which is using the dark gun, which isn't quite as it should be yet because it only lasts 20 weeks, which is great fun. I just disappear off and say, bye everyone, I'm off take one of my friends with me so I can see them for the day and we go off finding ponies. <laughs> the contraceptive option got very complicated, firstly because you have to inject the ponies three times within the first six months and for us to bring in all our mares and do that is a massive thing to do. Uh, and also if we're darting them, I think there's huge question marks over that as well on the open commons. With so many conflicting opinions, it's difficult to know which is the best strategy to implement. And while these debates continue to rage on, farmers who are unwilling to continue slaughtering their foals are having to make tough decisions. Steve's herd have been a part of his family for 150 years, but he now feels he has no other choice but to end this long-standing tradition. Unfortunately, it looks like I could be the last of a long line of family members to, to carry on the tradition of riding horses and keeping ponies on the moor. And it would be nice to think that if there was a management plan put in place, that I'd be able to pass my traditions of going on the moor, gathering ponies on horseback to the next generation in my family. The rest of my family are very saddened to think that well, I'm gonna give up the ponies on the moor, but they, they understand why, but they feel sad and I suppose a little bit angry to think that such an easy thing to sort the problem out on the moor isn't being done. If all pony keepers decide to get rid of their herds, not only will Dartmoor's fauna and flora deteriorate, but a whole way of life will be lost too. I've been very lucky that to be able to go out with my, my family, mainly my father, riding on the moor, from a very young age and pick up where the ponies are, when we gather them off the moor, where to look for them, where to get them across rivers. And it's all skills that you don't just go out there and, and pick them up. You've got to learn it from your father that know the moor, know the ponies. For centuries, the pony has been an iconic emblem of this archaic landscape. Now, the pony could become a symbol for the tragic loss of Dartmoor's heritage. With pony keeping in decline, the skills that have been passed down for generations could be lost forever. What you're about to watch will soon be a sight not to be witnessed again on Dartmoor. Ready? Yeah. Flash, lie down, lie down. 